everyone, how are we all? I hope you're safe and well. Paul79 here. And guess what? It's Friday and I'm absolutely knackered. Oh, I need to sort myself out really because uh, I'm always moaning, aren't I? Because I'm always moaning that I'm knackered. But it's just because I just try and do too much. That's the problem. But yeah, I hope we've all had good weeks. I've had an extremely busy week, as you probably know. I mean, I know it wasn't long ago that we start, we were talking um, to each other. Um, I had my MOT, my, my personal exhaust pipe was inspected. Um, and first of all, thank you everyone for, um, I got a few messages from some people, you know, I don't necessarily know them, but they were like, oh, I hope it goes all right. And that's really nice. And, um, you know, I would do the same sort of thing, you know, so that, so that was really good. Um, it all went, um, swimmingly well. Um, there's still a few problems up there, um, but certainly nothing like it was. So, you know, I'm in a good mood, touch wood. Um, yeah, so, you know, everything's good. I've just got to obviously keep on with the medication. Um, yeah, work's been really busy. Um, I'll tell you a funny story. <laughs> funny story. So I was in the hospital and I was doing like the pre-screening things uh, with the nurse. Um, her name's Yolanda. Hello, Yolanda. She was really nice. And uh, she asked me, because I have to be under, I have to be sedated to have this done. And she goes, um, so who's going to be picking you up? Because you, obviously you can't drive home on your own. So I just said my beautiful wife. I always say, I always refer to my beautiful wife as my beautiful wife because she is beautiful. And she just suddenly, and she just went, oh, that's a lovely thing to say. And I said, well, yeah, yeah, why not? She is beautiful. And then we got talking and then the whole YouTube thing came out and how I always refer to her as the, um, the BW. And... Um, and yeah, and she said, oh, my husband absolutely loved cars. So in the end, I sent a text message to him with the name of the YouTube channel. So hopefully I um, got an extra uh, subscriber there. So that's that's all good. Um, what else have I done? Oh, so Wednesday, yeah. So obviously I had the MOT, all fine. But I was so tired afterwards, I went to sort of sleep in the afternoon. And um, I was just looking forward to a nice evening, nice meal, nice evening, nice quiet evening, watching the Champions League. Unfortunately, Man United are not in it. Oh, um, but um, yeah, looking forward to that. But then suddenly um, we'd realised one of our dogs had eaten something she shouldn't have. So then we had to go, me and Jules, sorry, me and, my, me and the BW had to um, go to... Um, go to the vets and she had to be made sick and uh, luckily she's fine she's fine but you can't be too careful so uh, yeah so I was in the vets till about half nine then got back and I thought oh maybe I'll sort of watch the football highlights and then <laughs> and then a good friend of mine rang me up and said oh is it possible you could come over and sort of sort my daughter's car tires out because they've gone flat and of course I would help with that situation because I've got a pump and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, went over there, checked it out, it was too dark. But in the end, the next day, went around there seven in the morning, sorted the tires out and uh, so she could get to work safely. So um, yeah, and I got a bottle of wine out of it. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Lauren. Thank you for the wine. It's going down very well. Uh, the wine is on the shelf. Um, so yeah, the, so that was all good. So we've had just it was a very busy Wednesday, and then work on Thursday was really, really, really busy, and um, and then I had to play table tennis Thursday night. And you know what? It's just like I got I got on the train, and I'm just like, oh, you know, I really, I am just so tired. And you know when those things, it's like you arrange something. And then at the time you go, oh yeah, yeah, we we'll do that in a couple of weeks. That's good. That's that's that sounds great. And then it gets to the day, and you just think, oh, can I be asked? Sorry, can I be bothered? But I've always said this, and I always do this. It's just like just do it because when you actually get there to do whatever you're doing, it's worth it, sort of thing. So like last night was table tennis, and. Um, it was great. I saw some people that I haven't seen for years. So big shout out to Nikki. 
Uh, it was lovely to see you. Haven't seen Nikki for a long time, um, and, oh, like over 20 years. She looks exactly the same. And um, and then John, John C, um, you haven't changed a bit and it's lovely to see you again. And it was just, thank you for, you know, just helping all of you make the evening really good. We had a great night, had a beer in the pub afterwards and it was just fantastic and i'm just just really really glad that i didn't just bail out or anything like that so um so there you go so i've talked for five minutes right that's i'm going to try and set my limit to not not talk for more than five minutes at the start um because i know some of you get bored but what we're going to do now is part two of the steering wheel project right and i noticed and that on part one when I was doing like the filming of like the steering wheel, like on the bench and all that, I I just got the I got the impression that it was a bit blurry because I'm using my camera, my iPhone, which is what you're what I'm using right now to do it. And I know they've got good cameras, but um, yeah, um, I've got this old video camera here, so I'm going to try. I've taught, done a test run and it came out okay. I'm just going to try using that to do the up close and personal sort of stuff with the steering wheel and see how that comes out. It might not be in widescreen because this this camera, I bought this when um, my oldest daughter was born, so it's 15 years old, but um, it should still work, so we'll see. I just, I've been looking at the old GoPros and stuff like that and, you know, just for sort of ease of use and quality and all that and a lot of people that do YouTube videos use them. But they are a lot of money and I know you get what you pay for in life, but you know, I'm not really, I don't really need a camera that I can go swimming with or, you know, just run down a mountain with. So I just don't know. So I don't want to bite the bullet just yet. You know, something like that, you need to do a bit of research anyway. So we'll see how it goes with the old Sony Handycam. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do, part two of the old steering wheel project, and I will see you in a bit. Bye-bye. Right, so, if you remember, I sort of left you last time hanging on a limb with the steering wheel looking like this. You know, I'd put in these bits, yeah, to get rid of the buttons, and everything was lovely. But as I was sort of doing it, do you remember, we had those gaps there oops there um, where you know the, the the backing plates they had this extra gap here and um, I put this on a I put this on loads of forums and stuff like that and the guy that I um, got the idea from I won't say his name but thank you mate his name begins with Steve uh, oh he's <laughs> His name begins with S. It's not Steve. His name begins with S. Um, he um, he said to me, "Yeah, yeah, I can see the um, I can see the gaps as well on mine, but um, when you uh, when you're driving it, you know, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, you don't even notice them." Yeah, and I was just thinking about this as I was driving the car anyway. It's just like you really shouldn't be looking down at the steering wheel, especially when you're turning the wheel. But anyway, so. Um, I couldn't be uh, I couldn't be bothered to sort of ring up Porsche and try and get the versions of these without this gap here because I just thought you know you know what I was lying in bed I couldn't get to sleep and I thought why don't I just try and make something that mimics that edge bit so that's what I've sort of done so what I've got here is a piece of cardboard I've had a few iterations of this and I've got some black plastic here where I've sort of scored it out but the idea is I'm just going to do well I've already done it on the other one and this is I'm just telling you for the other other side but basically the idea is is replicate that in black plastic and have it so it sits there in the thing like that and is secured and it hides the gap and what I've done actually on this one so you can see here there you can see the black plastic is in place it's basically secured to this bit and I tried to use super glue I'll tell you what right I have tried to use super glue on so many things on my car projects over the years and it's never worked I really should just chuck it away it just doesn't seem to stick 
anyway um, I tried super glue on this one and unfortunately I got a bit of it on the sort of trim bit but you can see you can see how I filled the gap in with the black plastic and I guess when um, the, the wheel is like that it's only if you if you really look for it you can see the gap and even then it is filled in right so I'm going to show you how I sort of made that one and I've got to make the other side anyway um, so yeah right so what I've got here is so I've replicated that cardboard cutout into this plastic stuff and the idea is is that will sit there and be secured to it and bend round and then be secured there all right now the problem is is this plastic needs bending right so what I did is I <coughs> did it, this will work on both sides but effectively right what I've done is I drew that curve on a piece of cardboard and then I transferred it to some wood and then I filed the wood down so the top of it yeah is like the curve that I need and the idea is is you put I secure this piece of plastic on the wood and then heat it up with a heat gun and basically bend it and then just hold it so then when it goes cold it's got the curve in it yeah so that's why I've done that so I'm gonna have a go at doing that right now so that's exactly what I did on that one and then basically it means that the the sort of we're gonna call this a blanking plate the blanking plate is in place and and working as it should so I've just banged a little nail through there and I've got my piece of plastic here and then oh oh it's come out <laughs> I'll bang that in again yeah I didn't I didn't want to do it too much because I can get it out but basically the idea is is I heat this sort of part of it up and then just bend it round like that and that will and then let it cool off and the idea is is that will then give me the curve in the plastic that I need so what I've done is I've heated it up with the old gum, right? Bottle of wine. <gasps> Two bottles of wine. That one's been there ages, that one, right? But I'm now just holding this plastic sort of in place as it cools so I can get that curve in there and it will hopefully stay where it needs to stay. So it's cooled down now, so you can see now the plastic has that little bit of curve in it, right? Now what I'm going to do, you see where the hole is for the nail, I'm going to snip that off so there's no hole showing because that's just sort of like extra length. And then what I'm going to do is put some butyl tape, dum dum I call it, um, it's this stuff here, this mastic tape, I'm going to, I'm going to cut that, that tape in half and then sort of put that down there and mount the plastic the black plastic in the sort of surround section right so i've gone back to basics i've got my uh, black plastic here right and in the end what i decided to do is just use to get it in place some like gorilla tape um you know this stuff um cut off uh, thin strips of it right and then sort of wrap that around there and around the bottom and then just at that bit there I just put some of the butyl tape to sort of bridge the gap to keep the thing in place so now you've got something like that that's just got the extra it covers the gap again you know I'm being very um, pedantic here it's like the back of the steering wheel <laughs> so what I'm then going to do is I'm just going to pop that in place so there you go so it's in so now we've got the gap filled from there that's what you see it's pretty much done okay so you've got you can see 
this curve right from the back. That really isn't the end of the world because <laughs> it's the back of the steering wheel, isn't it? So, so there you go. So I'm just going to put it all back together now and hopefully put it on the car. So before I um, <clears throat> actually go and take the steering wheel off the car, just wanted to talk to you about this. This. So this is the bolt, right, that goes in the middle of the steering wheel and secures your steering wheel to the column, right? And if you look, oh god, this camera. You can see it's got lots of little teeth there. Now, some people, me included in the past, haven't had the actual fittings with all the teeth yet. So you can use a T55, right? It's only got six and it does work, right? So it fits in there and it will turn it. However, not saying it's dangerous, but really, your steering wheel, that might be done up very tight. So you can see here, that's the thread lock from the factory, yeah? What you really do need to buy is these proper ones with all the little teeth. Now, I know that my steering wheel on the white car is on and I loaded it with thread locks, so getting it off is gonna be a pain. But hopefully it will work now because I have this thing with all the teeth, yeah, to be able to, to loosen it. But yeah, I just thought I'd tell you that because, yeah, some people cheat a bit and use these things because they just don't have them. You know, these things, they come with the, you know, your typical tool set over there. That one was from Halfords, Halfords Advanced, brilliant tools, built three cars with them. Um, but yeah, so I just thought I'd mention that. So yeah, they look very similar and they are the same size. But yeah, really, you don't really want to do that, use these, these um, star ones because... You might end up damaging the teeth in there as well, as well as your, um, as well as your um, socket set. All right. Right. So this is the current steering wheel I've got. It's a PDK one. Um, it all works. It all, all looks lovely. So, but yeah, I think I'm going to try with the other one. So with this one, the hole to release the airbag is just one hole underneath there. So I'm going to need to get a screwdriver and stick it up there to release the thing and pop the airbag out. But before you do anything with airbags, you've got to disconnect the battery and leave it for a bit. So, I've disconnected the battery, just taking the earth off. Um, make sure that when you do that, make sure, um, obviously, you've still got your keys, uh, doors are open, etc and that your windows have come down, right? Because if you, you want them lower because you don't want them to reset up high and then, because they won't go down when you open it but if the battery's shut and it'll smash into the top of this. So that's what you've got to be careful of. So there you go. So I stuck the screwdriver and it's actually really quite easy and sort of just, you, you, you'll know when you're pushing on the wire to push it up and release it. It's not going to pop out miles, it will just come a little bit forward and then suddenly you can take it out. So there we go, it's out. There are the connectors, they're colour coded, the airbags earthed as well. There'll be a clip and that's what we've got. And if you look here, that was the wire I was telling you about. See, it's on a spring. Oops. See, it's on a spring, and you stick your screwdriver. Where's it gone? There's, you can see the hole. You stick your screwdriver. Oh, God, it's so difficult one hand. You can see, and what you're trying to do is just lift that wire up like that, yeah? And it pops out. Right, now to um, take the actual bolt off and get the wheel off. Oh, well I'm out of breath now. Um, I've just managed to get it off. I was really worried about doing this bit because I'd put so much thread lock on it. Look at it, that is far too much. I'm not gonna do that again. But yeah, I've got it off uh, in one piece. Um, I wouldn't have been able to do that without that proper shaped socket. So definitely get one of them boys and girls. Hello everyone, how you doing? I'm absolutely exhausted now. So, <clears throat> in the last scene, it was probably about 10 o'clock in the morning. It's now five o'clock, right? And all that time, pretty much, 
uh, give or take maybe a couple of hours, I've been trying to get that bloody steering wheel off. Oh my God. But I'm pleased to say it is now off. Um, don't let this put you off. It is all my fault. The problem is, remember when I was talking about the, um, the thread lock that they put on at the factory? That's all they put on, that blue, yeah? Thing is, is I remember when I was doing it, when I was putting it on the white one, I put loads of thread lock on there and I knew it's gonna be a job to take it off. Um, I thought the worst bit would be undoing the nut, but got that off, but the steering wheel was on the spline and then trying to get that off the spline, the thread lock had gone all in there and it's like glue. It's really good stuff, but yeah, I had far too much. So in the end, I needed to have use a puller, a steering wheel puller, but could I find one? I have loads of pullers for ball bearings, hubs and all that. This was the one that should have done the job. The problem is, is you needed a heavy duty puller, but there was nowhere in the steering wheel to actually get these feet in. There's just no holes. Um, I rang up my good friend Tom at Auto Strauss and I said, have you got any pullers? And uh, he goes, yeah, mate, I've got a few. So um, God bless him, he um, he lent me them, he left all three. I was gonna, he had this one, right? Which I thought, oh, that is gonna be perfect because it's really sort of small and the teeth are small. But the problem with this one is it only opens that wide and I needed it wider. You know, he gave me this one, oops. Um, but the problem is, is it needed to be a heavy duty puller um, but have sort of small fins, smaller than this. So I even tried to make my own one. Look, try to make my own one. Look, I've got a couple of bits of metal and I was drilling holes and I was filing it down. And, and then when I tried to use that, I actually broke a bit of the steering wheel. So it was at that point you go, well, you have to take drastic measures sometimes. Um, you know, I Googled. <laughs> Or I looked up on YouTube how to take a steering wheel off a 987 to see whether there was anyone talking about. I mean, oh no, I've taken loads off before. But yeah, they just pull off. But yeah, my one, um, I'd been silly in the past and just been over cautious, you know, with my OCD and used too much thread lock. So that didn't work. Um, in the end, what I had to do, unfortunately, is sort of... So at this point, I destroyed part of the steering wheel right? Uh, it was only a tiny little bit of metal had come off. Um, but there was no way that I was going to sell that to someone because that part of the metal was where the airbag went. And there is no way I couldn't live with myself if I sold something and then, then the airbag went wrong. So it was at that point where I've gone, right, you know what, we just need to take drastic action. And in the end, I had to, I'm going to show you in a minute on the other camera, I had to basically grind out with my power file holes big enough to then get a heavy duty puller around it and even then i couldn't get all three in to uh, ultimately i had to modify this we'll take this apart and and make it so it worked um but eventually she came off and i could have i mean i was gonna throw the steering wheel down the street to be fair <laughs> be off with you it was a nightmare but anyway I'm, I'm happy now, but that's always happens with car mechanics or any mechanics, you know, 10 minute job turns into 10 hours. Right, so I don't need to show you this, but I thought I will because it's it's taken forever today and you know, I'm only human. Um, and I just think it's quite funny. Um, so basically this steering wheel is an, one I bought years ago when I tried to put this on a, a 986 Boxster, but they have completely different spline holes. So it's just a sort of a, a rough dead one, you know, I'd already cut out the airbag wiring and all that sort of stuff. So, however, that one, this silver one was on this car because when I take it to the paint shop, um, you know, they, they're gonna need a steering wheel obviously to move it around but yeah i used this sort of as a dummy to when when i was trying to make my my own sort of puller thing and the idea was is i was like going to use these bits here and uh, as the bit to pull and uh, when i first tried it on the real one this bit of metal here see that bit oops this bit here 
one of those little sticky up bits that broke off right so on the real one so past the point of no return now the steering wheel is buggered so in the end what I found and of course this thing didn't work I'm gonna keep that as a trophy I'm gonna put that somewhere to sort of remind me that it took me a it this took over six hours of my life and it didn't work but in the end what I had to do just to get the bloody thing off is I had to grind away these gaps these sticky up things so you see you've got sticky up things there and I've ground them away yeah just so I can get the feet in right and then it's come off and even then that one there it, it came off mid pulling but yeah so you know it's it's a mess now um, I this can't be sold um, I probably would have only got about 50 quid for it but you know you know you win some you lose some I suppose people could use them for uh, track day cars you know where you don't need an airbag and stuff so uh, yeah that's an idea but yeah so that's where we are and this is now what my car looks like absolutely filthy um, it's all superficial but yeah it was a bit a bit of a nightmare so but the good thing is it's off so I'm gonna clean this all up clean that spline up so it's brand new and then maybe we can actually put it on right so now it's clean cleaned everything up give it all a nice spruce up I've got to go and cook the dinner now so I can't put it on yet hopefully tonight so I've put the steering wheel on right I went for a drive um, to check that the centering was okay so I think I've got it okay now so I put a teeny tiny bit of thread lock on there on the actual bolt putting the airbag in giving it all a clean so now I'm going to just fit it up properly so it's all in place um, I'm just having oh excuse me to do a scan of the car to hopefully make the airbag light go off um, you always have to do that buying one of these things is a, a good investment um, so yeah let's see how we go so folks it's finished no errors the horn still works uh, I've got my new gear knob in as well that off eBay sort of complements the leather bits at the side of the stereo but yeah all good it's been a bit of a journey but really pleased with it um, it's slightly fatter than the other one and plus you can see the instruments better because there's sort of less of the steering wheel and I've been out for a drive in it and I reckon I've got five horsepower extra now as well which is always good right guys all done I'm glad it's all finished now I love it it's a really nice steering wheel like I said I've got an extra five horsepower um, yeah it was a bit of a project in the end um, just with the whole steering wheel removal but you know hey ho that's the way it goes for me you won't have that problem because you won't have done the silly thing with a thread lock like i've done but uh, but it's anyway yeah and it's a shame that we had to sort of destroy that other steering wheel but i've had an idea i might make it into a clock so you know have a clock face in the middle um so yeah and put that in the living room I'm sure the uh, my beautiful wife will really appreciate that so anyway um i'm gonna sign off now um and uh, I'll see you on the next video. I don't know what I'm going to be doing, but um, yeah, stay tuned and uh, uh, take care and stay safe. See you later, everyone. Bye.